Hi, this is Brian from Riverside Reptiles Education Center. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to visit us if you're in the area. We're at 132 South Road in Enfield, Connecticut. And uh, today's video, let me think, what should we do for today's video? Ah, I know, let's talk about scorpions because we have some very cool scorpions here and uh, I want to teach you all about them. So what is a scorpion exactly? Well, scorpions are invertebrates, which means they don't have an inside skeleton like we do. Instead, they have an outside skeleton called an exoskeleton. So there's many different types of invertebrates. There's crabs, which are, and lobsters, which are crustaceans, same thing of shrimp. Um, many other types like millipedes and centipedes, and then we have uh, insects. There's probably over a million species, uh, actually there is over a million species of described insects and probably another nine million undescribed species of insects. So we're always surrounded by a lot of invertebrates. Uh, but scorpions are arachnids. So what makes arachnids different from other invertebrates? Well, let's start with this. Um, they have eight legs. So think, of your, think to yourself, what other type of animal has eight legs and lives on land? Spiders, of course. So spiders are arachnids, scorpions are arachnids, and then there's a couple other miscellaneous arachnids out there as well. There's uh, whip scorpions. Um, there's also um, tailless whip scorpions. Uh, the whip scorpions are also known as vinegaroons, which are pretty cool. They actually spray vinegar or a vinegar smelling substance into the eyes of a would-be predator. And then, uh, Daddy long legs, which a lot of people think are spiders, but they actually belong to a different group of arachnids called harvestmen. And, and everyone's favorite arachnid, I'm sure you can think of this one, uh, when you're out in the woods or in the fields or in the jungle, uh, this arachnid finds you because it feeds on your blood. Uh, everyone's favorite ticks. Ticks are arachnids as well. Uh, so they have eight legs. They have two major body parts, unlike insects, which have three major body parts. So insects have a head, thorax, and abdomen. Whereas uh, arachnids have two major body parts. Their head and their thorax are combined, called a cephalothorax, and then they have a large abdomen. Um, so that kind of in a nutshell is what arachnids are, and that's how we tell them apart from other animals. So let's take a look at some scorpions, and we'll look at some other uh, things on the scorpion that makes them very unique. So right now, we just have one species of scorpion here at Riverside Reptile. Soon, um, sometime soon when we open the bug cave, we'll have some other species. But right now we just use a species called an emperor scorpion because um, they're not deadly venomous and they're relatively placid and easy to hold. Uh, so we use them a lot for our educational programs. So here's a great example of a nice big emperor scorpion. Uh, so you can see that she, had, actually, this is, I'm pretty sure this is a boy. He's feeling around with his pedipalps and ow, yeah, I feel that. He's pinching my fingers. And he's actually trying to eat my finger right now. We'll see if he's hungry a little bit later, but uh, they do have powerful pinchers and their pinchers are actually called pedipalps. And they use their pedipalps to grab and crush their prey. So emperor scorpions have huge pedipalps. They also have this nice big stinger right here. This is called the Telson, and we'll get a better look at that right now. They have a very large stinger, and in that bulb right there, it's packed with venom. Now, thankfully, for me at least, their venom is not uh, considered medically significant to humans, meaning if you get stung by an emperor scorpion, it's very unlikely that you'll need medical attention. Um, I've been zapped by uh, emperor scorpions a few times, uh, and it feels like a bee sting. It hurts, it's unpleasant, um, but just like a bee sting, the pain subsides in an hour or so, and then you're good as new. So scorpions, again, they have these big, large pedipalps in the front. They have the long tail with a stinger at the end. You can see that she's got eight legs. Four legs on one side, four legs on the other. So we know that they are arachnids. Now they also have very primitive eyes. You see right here at the base of my finger, there's a l two little very primitive eyes right there. So scorpions can't see very well. In fact, this scorpion cannot see 
uh, myself or Melina, who's taking the video, uh, very poor sense of sight. So they rely on their other senses to find their way around. So what you might be able to see through the camera is they're covered in tiny little hairs. So at the base of those tiny little hairs, there's a special sensory cell in their exoskeleton that helps them sense air movement. So if an animal comes too close and is breathing on them, if a bird flies down and it's moving the air, it will, these little hairs will tell the scorpion how big that object is and how far away it is. Another really neat thing on scorpions, it's not the easiest thing to see, but we'll see if we can immobilize them for a sec. There's a trick to emperor scorpions. If you put your thumb over their eyes, you can kind of move around, do what you want with them. So right here, those little two little things that look like combs, those are called pectins. And what they do is when they walk, they put these pectins on the ground and it kind of combs the ground. And it tells the scorpion what kind of surface it's walking on, whether it's rock or sand, or if there's humidity or water in the area. These little pectin sensory organs tell the scorpion all it needs to know. Now on this one, we can tell it's actually a girl because their pectins are small. Boys, their pectins actually go further out. You'll see them expand a little bit wider than their own body. So we know that this is actually a female emperor scorpion. We'll put her down right here and we'll see if we can find a boy for comparison. All right. So we know that this is a lady, a lady scorpion. So I found a male. So we saw the pectins on the female were relatively small, but the, it's about the width of her own body. So look at this boy. Don't fall on my lap, scorpion. So here are the pectins on a male. You can see they're a little bit wider than the body and the comb, the teeth part are a little bit longer as well. So we know that this is a boy scorpion. So typically the females do get larger than the males. So I know that there's definitely males and females in my colony because I've been captive breeding emperor scorpions for about 20 years now. And, and luck have it, we actually have a female in here that just gave birth. So let me put these guys back and we'll get her out. So scorpions, they actually give live birth. Uh, so the babies come out alive. They don't lay eggs. And as soon as the babies come out, they crawl onto mom's back. And scorpion moms typically usually make pretty good moms because they keep the babies safe from predators. Also, since you can see the babies are white, their exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. So the chitin that forms the exoskeleton is still relatively soft. So it hasn't hardened. So these guys can lose moisture very easily. But being clumped on mom's back, she can regulate the humidity. And if it's getting too dry, she'll just pick up her babies and move them into a more humid place. So to make sure they don't dry out and die. So they'll stick on mom's back for about two weeks. And eventually, they'll start to crawl off mom's back, they'll shed their skin, They'll shed their exoskeleton. Um, they'll be, their exoskeleton will be harder. They'll be able to move and walk around and then they'll be off on their own. Now, we gotta be very careful though. So when the babies are crawling off mom's back, um, mom might eat a few. So that's what happens in uh, the life of a scorpion. But then again, if you have like 20 kids, you know, you might consider eating a couple anyway. Um, so we, <laughs> <laughs> wow, who wants 20 kids? You know? <laughs> so during that phase, during the end of the two weeks, we keep a close eye on our scorpions because as the babies start to crawl off, we'll remove them out of the container and give them their own uh, separate container so mom doesn't eat them. Typically the females don't eat that much when um, the babies, uh, when they give birth. So she's kind of starving herself right now. Um, that's the way it is in the scorpion life. It's not always easy. Um, but it is very fascinating nonetheless.
So another fascinating thing about scorpions is they actually glow in the dark if you have the proper light. So in their exoskeleton, in the chitin, they have special reflector cells, kind of similar to um, like your bicycle or, or the special uh, safety uniforms that workers uh, wear on the, on the road with reflective uh, fabric. So they, their exoskeletons can reflect light and they reflect ultraviolet light. Now, the theory behind why they uh, reflect this light is because they prey primarily on insects, right? And insects can see in different wavelengths than humans. Um, so there's always different types of ultraviolet light beaming down from, the, from outer space. Um, most of the spectrums we can't see in, but insects can. Um, so at night, when that ultraviolet light is coming down, um, it's creating a, a kind of a glow around the scorpion. Um, the insects will be attracted to that glow and the scorpion, all it has to do is close its big pedipalps and it has its food. Uh, so that's one of the theories why uh, scorpions glow under ultraviolet light. But I happen to have a nice ultraviolet light fla uh, flashlight here. So we're gonna show you how this particular scorpion glows underneath a black light. Now we got a beautiful turquoise colored scorpion and all scorpions, all species of scorpions reflect ultraviolet light, even dead scorpions. Um, I know they make a lot of knickknacks like paperweights um, and an acrylic mold with a dead scorpion in it. They sell them at all the Ari Arizona airports and Texas and where you find scorpions, even those scorpions will reflect ultraviolet light. So if you have one of those dead scorpions at your house and uh, one of those paperweights or in a piece of acrylic, get yourself an ultraviolet flashlight, it will have the same effect. So scorpions are super easy to find in the desert or in the tropics if you have the right tools. In fact, next time you go to the desert or if you go to the tropics, bring a nice ultraviolet flashlight go outside at night, shine it all over the ground, and you can scare yourself silly because there's usually scorpions everywhere if you're in the appropriate habitat. So we're going to try feeding our emperor scorpions. Uh, we feed them crickets, we give them dubia roaches, um, and they absolutely love superworms. So we're going to see if she wants a superworm. She was trying to eat my finger earlier, so I can only assume that she's still hungry. Um, but we've had her out for a while. We put a black light on her. Um, so we'll see. So here are superworms. Of course, not really worms at all. They're a type of beetle grub from the Tenebrionid beetle. Let's see if she wants her super worm. So when they always get their food, they always want to go to a place of safety to eat it. So that's why he's looking for, or she's looking for a place to eat it. So the way a scorpion eats is super cool. So they grab it with their claws, other pedipalps, and they kind of hold it in front of their mouth parts, which you can see this super worm is kind of sticking out of its mouth parts. And a scorpion's mouth parts consist of a bunch of tiny, almost looks like tiny little claws to help hold on to the prey. And at the same time, what the scorpion is doing is it's uh, regurgitating digestive enzymes onto its prey, which is kind of like a strong stomach acid. It's essentially exactly what it is, is a strong stomach acid. And it's liquefying the food so the scorpion can kind of slurp it up. Sounds delicious, right? So all scorpions are carnivores. They all eat smaller animals. Most of their diet consists of smaller invertebrates like um, insects, uh, grasshoppers, crickets, beetles. Um, occasionally they'll eat other arachnids like smaller scorpions and spiders. Um, and some of the larger species of scorpions, um, they'll even eat vertebrates, small vertebrates, like uh, small snakes, lizards. 
they're pretty much opportunistic carnivores. So if they can catch it, overpower it, and kill it, they'll eat it. we have some yearling emperor scorpions usually takes an emperor scorpion about three years to get full size and on the average my emperor scorpions I've had them live as long as eight years sometimes a little longer so these are a bunch of yearlings and you can see the ones that are getting kind of thick those guys are actually gonna shed pretty soon and these guys are quick but thankfully they're stingers the Telson really isn't big enough to penetrate skin yet. So last year was actually a boom year for Emperor Scorpion breeding. Um, we had, I believe over 60 babies being born. Uh, it was four different females gave birth. Um, so far this year, we just have one female, but typically they all birth at around the same time. So we could have some more coming up in the next day or in the next week or so. On average, um, my scorpions give birth on the average of usually six to 13 or 14 babies. My record uh, is I had a big female that actually had 17 babies. Um, I'm not sure what the world record is, but I'm sure it's more than that. Some species of scorpions can have many more babies than that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. This is Brian Kleiman from Riverside Reptiles. Bye guys. Oh my God, it's going down my neck. I feel so good. You have little hooks in their legs that kind of like, they stick to you like Velcro.